Hey guys, it's Pat from Pat's Brewery. And uh, yeah, just checking in. So I'm aware it's been a number of weeks since I've put out a video. And uh, I think even in my last video, I was like, oh, I promise I've got content coming. And it, it just didn't. Um, so yeah, a little bit of an apology there. Uh, so we are going to be having a little drink, just a sample uh, in this video, um, because I think a full video is, is going to be needed. But I recently had a brew day um, and it's uh, basically this beer is intended to go to the Anglian Craft Brewers uh, competition, which is in November. Um, in November, pretty sure. Um, which obviously is a, a good number of weeks away, but I had to brew it early because if I brewed it now, it probably wouldn't be ready in time and, and bits and pieces. So um, anyway, anyway, what have I brewed? So it's uh, an American specific competition, so American style. Um, and in my head, I was like, okay, well, what do I want to do? How, what, what to me is uh, an American beer? And uh, also, what have I brewed in the past that I could confidently say, well, that's, that's pretty good. Um, and I done, quite a while ago, a uh, Sierra Nevada um, clone. And I think it was probably a clone of the Malt Miller or, or something like that. Um, and I had a look at that and I thought, oh, I could probably do something similar, but I didn't want to do just a, a clone. And I happened to, uh, got in a lucky dip bag a bag of uh, Equinot um, 100 grams and I was like well you know what this might work out um, Equinot is you know good for whirlpooling and dry hopping um, but uh, I bought this beer I thought I don't want to dry hop I think sometimes we're a little bit too dependent on the on the dry hop uh, so I thought Using the Sierra Nevada styling, I just thought, all heavy whirlpool. Um, something else that I did do, though, with, uh, with this beer is, uh, so I, I got some base malt in, and then Sierra Nevada uses a sort of, sort of crystal malt of some sort, I can't, couldn't remember, um, of a certain uh, EBC. And I was like, well, rather than buying that, do I have anything of a similar? So I may have gone a little bit too dark. So this is just a heads up uh, with regards to it. I don't know if I've got any brewery footage. As I say, this is just a first sample because actually the full keg is still in the garage because the keyser is actually still full um, with the kegs from Pactoberfest. I've not, none of them have kicked yet. I think some of them are very close. I done a large bottling session a, a number of weeks ago and sent out some beers. Um, I know that the, the usual suspects that I send the beers out to uh, haven't received them yet. Uh, and that's because the ones that I bottled aren't going to yourselves. <laughs> I, I bottled, um, I think, eight lots of the Mac. Uh, so the Mosaic, Amarillo and Centennial beers past videos you know it all. Anyway, watch the past videos if you're wondering what I'm talking about. Um, but yeah, so I, I sent those to the guys at the Hop Edition. Uh, I also sent them to, um, who else did I send them to? Some just people I work with as well. Uh, so that traveled. I mean, oh, tell you what, I, I missed a step in the normal packaging that I shouldn't have. Um, so I'll, right. and this, as I say, it's just a chat and a catch up, but um, I came across these boxes that I thought, if you're sending pet bottles, I know the guys at the competitions have called out quite severely that, you know, pet bottles aren't the best for, send, for, for beer. And in competitions, fine, I agree, but for convenience of sending beer out, pet bottles are great. I don't care what the guys say. <laughs> but, <clears throat> You know, I, I got these boxes because they do fit pet bottles and because pet bottles are quite substantial in holding things together, um, 
you don't need to put in as much, in my opinion, um, like packaging support. Now I've got these boxes. Let's see if I've got one here. Right, and I know you're, you're gonna go, Pat, that's not a box, that's an envelope. But, but it, it flattens out and it turns into a box that very nicely fits three pet bottles uh, with a little bit of space, so a little bit of packaging at the top. Now the problem that I've got, well, and I've, I've resolved this in the past by um, actually putting the bottles in a bag or a vacuum pack or something, but because the bottles are cold, causes condensation, and these boxes aren't the thickest, so they absorbed condensation, and I know that a few of the boxes that I sent out uh, so a few of the boxes that I sent out with beers in it um, actually uh, leak. Well, no, there's no leaks in the bottles, but the actual boxes themselves, the containers, uh, collapsed a little bit. Uh, so I don't even know. I'm, I don't know who has or hasn't received the beers yet. But in any case, um, I've got to have a think about whether or not I can continue to use these or not for beer mail. But anyway, uh, we've got to more BML. At some point, I am going to be doing some more bottling, uh, looking to get some more out to uh, everyone that I've got addresses to with regards to BML. So that will be will be happening. Anyway, uh, so as I say, the the main keg for this new beer is still in the garage under pressure in there. Um, but I do have. I've been gassing it in here. mini keg of this beer so we're gonna have a sample off of this and I say it's only gonna be a sample um, let's get two so I can just run the uh, I've got some star sand in here so I can run that off So we've got our beer. Let's see how dark it is, because when I pulled the first sample off, it was a little bit dark. Now, okay, so it's definitely not pressurized quite enough. Let's see if I can get a little bit more pressure in there. <clears throat> Should maybe had a bit more of a think of this before starting the filming, but okay, well, let's. I know this is such a, a great way of doing this, but as I say, yeah. But this is just a little sample anyway, so let's have a look. So it's a Surprisingly clear. That's not going to be close in that position, are you? Pop that up there. Work. Oh, that's not going to happen. Mm. All right, so. Surprisingly clear. Colour wise, obviously a lot darker than Sierra Nevada, uh, from what I recall. It's been a little while. Um, but I think that's a nice amber to brown. It's got a good nose on it, though. Yeah, so that's, a, that's an American nose with regards to your paddle. That's a. Uh, Equinox, you're a good, good one. I mean, so um, I'm doing all this from from memory, but um, so we use Centennial and Equinox in this, not just Equinox, uh, but uh, yes, yeah, so it is. Uh, I think there's a few Centennials throughout the boil, 
as well as a little bit of Centennial in the Whirlpool and then all of the, the 100 grams in the Whirlpool um, of the, the Equinox. Mm, that is rather nice. So, what else am I going to talk about other than just a, an initial sample of a little bit flat, but well, not conditioned enough yet beer. Um, well, I've come in here today and I've noticed that there's some moisture around the front of my keys are just here. Uh, not on the floor, but actually on the edge. So there's a little part of me, um, as I look around here, and so this is where my, my fridge ends and I've got a, an empty space here. And I've noticed there's uh, some staining along here as well. So I'm a little bit concerned. Oh yeah, I'm having a look down there. I've got quite a bit of ice in the bottom of the geyser. So um, in my head, that says to me that That's why this isn't that overly pressurised. Because that was under 10 psi. That's why. Uh, anyway, right. So, um, but yeah, I've noticed some some stainage. So, something that we might need to do. I've been thinking about this for a little while is actually remove the front plate off of the keyser um, and kind of tidy up around there because one of the biggest problems that I do have with my keyser is it does freeze over on the inside uh, like at the bottom and I mean, it happens whenever you run a freezer in an inappropriate way <laughs> which we are doing, you know, with regards to this. So, um, shouldn't be that surprised. So, but what I don't have in this is a drain off um, entry point. So I think if I can maybe take this off, open it up so at least I can get a little bit underneath the keyser, and then maybe we'll also add in, because there is a drain off, off for the keyser, but I don't have an access point to it. So I might add that in, um, so a little bit of a build activity there. But, you know, that, that might be some fun content because you'll get to see how I am in no way, shape or form a, uh, a chippy. And um, you'll see just how rough cut everything is that I, I, I've got here. Um, so yeah, that's, that's something that, you know, talking about content, that'll be something, but, um, yeah, I just wanted to, you know, check in, let everyone know I'm, I'm still here and, uh, I will be doing some more videos, um, but yeah, thanks for the, the, even though I've not been putting out content, uh, my subscribers numbers have still been going up very slowly. Uh, so I want to thank everyone that has been uh, subscribed and uh, continue to subscribe and, and what I'm watching. So um, thanks everyone. Uh, I've been Pat from Pat's Brewery drinking uh, this Equinot West Coast Pale, ooh, West Coast Amber Pale maybe? I don't, oh, I don't know. I don't know. Uh, basically the colour. I can't put that in, in a, as a pale, I don't think. But maybe it's an amber, American amber. Yeah. Anyway, guys, it's been Pat from Pat's Brewery. Cheers.